Welcome to Aesthetically Speaking with Felicia Lisa Middleton, presented by Urban Aesthetics, where we love buildings. speaking where we are building conversations about Philadelphia's locations. It's 2019 and it's time to show our city some love. So we are here during the month of love to give solutions on how love can be a way to help gentrification aid our city for the better. And we are here today with Chef Rafia Lum. Rafia Lum is the owner of Naturally Neat Cleaning Services as well as Love Creations by Chef Lum. And you may wonder, why do I have a chef on a show to talk about gentrification? Well, there's many reasons, because part of our quest in, in talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly of gentrification is to talk about ways that we can make it better, ways that we can make our communities better, ways that we can thwart any kind of blight that may come Blight can lead to gentrification because blight brings down the property values and then it makes people want to move out. It makes people have a negative feeling about where they live. And then that, what happens is people swoop in. Your property values go down, they swoop in and they purchase those properties at a lower rate. But if we can find ways where we can love our communities, bring our communities back up, bring back that sense of community, hold on to what we have and make what we have better, Maybe we can make gentrification serve us for the better and slow it down. I'm not saying end it. I'm not saying get rid of it. I'm not saying it's horrible, but slow down the negative effects of it. So the reason why I have Rafia alone here is because about 10 years ago, Rafia came to me. I thought she was crazy. <laughs> and not that I thought she was crazy for why she came to me, but both of us are, are, are people that care a lot about the environment. And Rafia came to me and asked me to help her pick up trash on the streets. I've always been one who hated litter. And Rafia has a cleaning company, so it made a lot of sense what she said. But one of the things it did, it changed me for, it changed, uh, I, I really might say it changed my life. Because I began, we, we started a program where we picked up trash in different yes. neighborhoods, planted flowers, brought children out to teach them about not, littering about helping to pick up trash but it drove my mother crazy because she would see me picking up trash and think that you know I would pick up trash in my own neighborhood so not only did I do it when Rafia and I were out on our trips of picking up trash but I did it in my own neighborhood and it just became a part of my life and I just started picking up trash everywhere and I would see Rafia doing the same thing and I, one of the things I wanted to ask you always was where did that start? Um, it started from when <laughs> I would get off of work and when I would walk home, I would see so much trash throughout the whole neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And it, even to this day, this is 2018, and that was what, 2000? That was 2009, I think, or 2008? It's 2019, and New Year's changed. You probably forgot all about it. Wow, yeah, yeah so, so, you know, in our new year, you know, it's hard to get used to it in February, I understand. Right, <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> So, um, it just made me realize, like, you know, I had my son, and I would tell my son, if you step on it, you pick it up. I love that. And that was really, like, a rule I had with him, because I didn't want him to think it was okay to have trash in the neighborhood. And he was so small. So, it just came to me, and I know, like Lisa said, she's a brilliant architect. And Thank we you. just came together, and I told her about it. And the idea was to go around different neighborhoods and go to community centers and get the youth, because the youth is pretty much who is going to be the next generation to keep our cities clean, mm -hmm. you know? And it, it just it's just something that, and plus I run a cleaning company, and that's a part of what I do. So I figure if I can keep the neighborhoods clean and I keep people's houses clean, it all comes together. It and does. that was the reason why I wanted to do it. And it was just something passionate. There's so much trash in Philadelphia. I don't get it. I don't understand why people throw trash out. I don't know why people are not keeping their neighborhoods clean or their communities clean. And it's very important because even the adults sometimes, even with when they have their children, I see adults throw out trash even with their own kids. So if they see their parents doing it, obviously 
when they get older, even at a young age, they're going to do the same thing. So yeah, yeah, they're going to think it's not a big deal. And that's where it starts. It starts too. So me and Lisa ended up doing it together and we did it for like a good three or four years. Yeah, and we joined then. Remember we joined uh, the gentleman in the city that had a uh, trash program? The trash And he yes. went around picking up trash. And we did it for a long time. And myself, one of the reasons why I don't do it as much is physical physical reasons. Sometimes it's hard to, to bend down and pick up, bend down and pick up. But I still try my best not to, um, if I see a piece of trash somewhere, Outside my office, I, I joined up Litter Us and had the neighbor, the clean neighbor, the clean block in the neighborhood where you clean up your block of your business, and all of that came from you telling me, "Let's go around picking up trash." And and, and at first, it, it quickly clicked in my head. This makes sense because trash is one of the biggest things that leads to blight. Yeah. But also, it's just a sense of pride you have when you bend down and pick up. When I see trash outside my office. I'm going to bend down and pick it up, not just because it's outside a place of business, but because I don't want to see that there. And I don't, and if somebody might throw it there, yes, they threw it there, but I'm going to pick it up. I'll take responsibility for that trash. Just like I'm not going to throw a can in the trash, a bottle in the trash. I'm taking it with me. I'm going to recycle it. And that's one of the things we would do. We started the recycling uh, arm of one of the trash programs that we were a part of. They were picking up trash, which is a good thing. But um, they weren't necessarily recycling the bottles and cans. And when you go out and pick up trash, you find a lot of bottles and cans. And uh, we started recycling the bottles and cans. And um, we did the Phillies. So. We did the. We did the. Um, that's another thing. Oh, I. You know what? You just made me remember something. We're. we're I'm a Phillies fan. Everybody knows it. And um, that's the way I show my city my love. It's my pride <laughs> in my team. And. Um, we went to the Philadelphia, uh, Phil the Philadelphia Phillies has a program, um, Phil the Phillies Go Green. Yes. And we volunteered a couple of years with that. We picked up bottles and cans. People leave bottles and cans along the um, seats and in between every inning, we the would inning. go down and pick the up the trash. Inning. Yes. Yeah, so pick up the bottles and cans. Everything. Yes. Yep. That was fun. It, it was, was a lot of fun. They gave us a free meal ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, and I was around my Phillies, so that they gave me even more love. Watch you know, the game for free. You, you get to watch the game for free, but it's a great way. All of these little things that we're talking about are ways that help show a sense of community. Um, I keep bringing this up, but a few shows ago, someone created a line that I still love, and it was called the community of ownership. Yes. All of this goes to that community of ownership because. Once we show that we have that ownership and that love for our community and that love for our city, that it's a ripple effect. It might sound like something really small, but those small things lead to bigger things and they can also stop some of the negative things or some of those feelings that we get when we see people moving in that might change the neighborhood culture, change the raise the, the property values and cause our neighborhoods to be completely different than what we're used to. Um, I sometimes I always wonder, people might think, well, you don't care about your neighborhood, so I'm coming in to take it. Exactly. And I mean, if, if you don't care about your neighborhoods, that's what will happen. It will happen. And that's what has happened. We've seen it happen. You know, both of us lived in Germantown. Yes. And we've both seen properties in Germantown go up and down, property values go up and down, and now there's development even in Germantown. And so some of the ways you may want to stop all of this blight in your neighborhood is to just show it some love. Show your city some love. And I don't think there's nothing <clears> wrong with picking up. And what bothers me is that they have trash cans at every corner now. And yes. people are still throwing trash around the streets. And I just feel like, you know, being so that I have a cleaning company, how many, do you do that in your home? Because what is the mindset? Yeah, I, I wonder where the mindset comes where's from. Where's your mindset? That's the question. Because a lot of people say, well, you know, I went out my car, but where's your mindset? Because if you have a good mindset, you wouldn't think about throwing trash out. The other day, I just got off the bus, and this guy had something in his hand. He just threw it up. I was like, I said, why would you do that? And the guy was like, the trash can over there, and he just had this attitude. So I think sometimes people just had this anger inside of them. So if they have anger inside of them, the main thing, they got trash in their hand. They don't care, so they want to throw it on the ground, and I don't think that's fair. And um, it's just, it's just a lot of trash in Philadelphia. It really is. 
The one thing I did notice, the trash is not as bad as it used to be because remember some of the days of the trash strikes and oh my God, the yes. trash used to be horrible in the city. Yes. It yes. is a lot better than it used to be. I think some of that comes from those programs that have been set up. Um, yes. I go back to Unlitter Us where you can actually, you can form a neighborhood cleanup and I've set up yeah. some um, neighborhood cleanups. You can contact the streets department they have a program where they number one they, they do a, a citywide street cleaning every year in april for uh for for uh for um earth day or earth month but also you can during the warmer months if you want to take pride in your neighborhood and make it better and show your neighborhood some love show your city some love you can actually contact the streets department and they actually have program set up where they will provide trash cans, yes. they will provide brooms, they will provide um, uh, shovels, and you and they will you just leave the trash in a specific spot and they will come and pick it up. So it's not really a lot of effort. It's a very good community function where you can get people together. And again, all of this stuff just it has a ripple effect. It's it an education. It's a way to bring people together, but it also helps make your community better so that we can slow down some of these negative things that people see that are happening and I hear these comments um, about the city from people in the city like you said on the bus when I'm on the bus I hear people saying things you know you might not like what's happening in your community you might not like this the fact that your your taxes are going up because people are moving in but what made it get to that point sometimes it getting to that point comes from our lack of pride in what we already have and not caring about our neighborhoods. Exactly. And that's rare. exactly. You know, back in the day, that's what families did in a, in a neighborhood, in a community, all came out on a Saturday morning and yep. cleaned their neighborhoods. They used to scrub the, the, the <laughs> sidewalks down with their broom and soapy water. Yeah, I mean, all of those little things, you know, we, we, we need to just, and, you, and, and as a community leader, you're a community leader. Yes. If you want to be a, a leader in your community, those are things you can you can uh, put together put together a group of people on your block to scrub down in front of each uh, house. Soapy water, warm soapy water, pour it out there, take the broom and scrub it, sweep up what you have, sweep it out into the street, um, get the streets department to pick up the trash, you know, sweep it into a pile and pick it up. That's Those are community things that, that those kind of those kind of activities create a sense of pride in your community. It's not just about having block parties. You also want to have a sense of pride to make your neighborhood better. And you do that and you, you bring people together and people will be less angry towards yes. one another. They, and maybe, like you said, that will go into your home. And, and you'll, maybe, you'll make your home. And that's another way of having a, a great communion yes. all together. Yeah. And don't say it's not, oh, that's not my stuff. It's everybody's stoop. It's everybody's stoop. So yes. remember that. That's one thing. We, we're, we're, we're glad we had this conversation on Valentine's Day. But one thing, do you know how they say it takes a village to raise a child? Yes. You're st everybody's stoop. We're all that. That's not your parking space in front of your house. That's everybody's parking space. The front of your home is everybody's front of their home because your trash blows down to somebody else's house. Your snow blows somewhere else. People walk past your home. So let's all work together as a community and, and just get together and become a little bit better in our city. Because I don't know about everybody else, but I love the Phillies. And I love my city. Yes! Go Phillies! <laughs> Show the Phillies some love. Spring yes. training's coming up soon. And we want to thank you all for joining in. And also, thank you, Rafia yes, Lum, for you. the thank love you. that you yes. always show for thank your you. city. And for actually, Rafia has a lot of love for people in general. And, I, and I'm grateful. Oops. You can cut that out. Um, <laughs> Rafia has a lot of love for people in general. And I'm grateful that Rafia is a part of our, our uh, team. We, we join together on projects all the time. And we are showing our city love and we want you to show your love. Tell us a few things about why you love the city in our comments below. Um, tell us a few ways you can show the city yes. more love in the comments below. Like our page, love our page, and subscribe to us. Again, we're keeping the conversation going. This is our next to our last show, but we are finding solutions for gentrification and we are building conversations about Philadelphia's locations. Thank you very much and have a great Valentine's Day. I love my team. Sure. <laughs> That's great. We're good. I hope the Philly